Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today I'm going to be watching the Big Bang Theory to see how accurate it really is. If we promote you to junior professor, you'll be able to choose whatever field of research you'd like. But if I'm a professor, then I'll have to teach a class. That is correct. So your solution is to promote me and pay me more money so that I can impart my knowledge to the next generation of scientists? Yes. You people are sick. <laughs> STEM professors are usually below useless when it comes to teaching or explaining subjects that they are teaching. And the reason for that is because there's no real incentive that a STEM, as in like science, technology, engineering, math, there's no real incentive that these professors have to ensure that their students are learning. The majority of professors that are at these universities are there for research purposes, and they're being forced to teach a class in order to continue the grant money, you know, so that they can do their own thing. Obviously not all professors are like this, but the vast majority that you have are not there to teach you. They're not there to help you. They're there for their own reasons, and they're teaching you because they have to. This is a graduate level physics class. <laughs> I don't think you'd understand a single thing I was talking about. Ask why not again, I've got an answer. Sheldon, I'm more than smart enough to take your class. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. How would you determine the ground state of a quantum system with no exact solution? I do not know. I would guess a wave function and then vary its parameters until I found the lowest energy solution. Hmm. <laughs> Do you know how to integrate x squared times e to the minus x without looking it up? I don't, I still don't fully understand how it works, but I do know how to do it if I needed to pass an exam. And you have to take the derivative of the function while it's underneath the integral sign, which normally if you're taking the integral of a derivative, they would just cancel each other out. But in this case, they, they, there's like a specific math trick that makes this work. I'm still not fully in understanding of how it works, but I can do it. I'd use Feynman's trick, differentiate under the integral sign. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is the correct interpretation of quantum mechanics? Since every inter There are correct interpretations, but they're... I don't... I don't know how to explain this, because I don't understand it well enough, but um, there are many different... I mean, there's like one definition for it, but there are many various interpretations for it, and many of them are equally correct. Interpretation gives exactly the same answer to every measurement. They are all equally correct. However, I know you believe in the many worlds interpretation, so I'll say that. Now, do you think I'm smart enough? No. <laughs> You might have gone to school for a couple more years than me, but guess what? Engineers are just as smart as physicists. <gasps> you take that back! <laughs> no. I've never understood why there's like this battle, and it's very real, between physicists and engineers about who's smarter, like who's done more. It's a really petty, and it's pretty clear that engineers are much smarter. You're up late. I'm working on my lesson plan for Wallowitz. Yeah. He is going to be so lost. <laughs> Look at this section over here. Even I don't really understand it. <laughs> the professors of engineering are actually very intelligent and they know exactly what they're talking about, even though it might seem otherwise. They just like there's a certain level that's a certain level of intelligence and a certain mindset that's required to get a PhD in engineering. Most of the time when the professors are like, why aren't you asking questions? It's, we just don't know what questions to ask because it's like you're explaining things that are so far beyond our understanding. But this is a bit exaggerated. I'm pretty sure all the professors know exactly what they're talking about. It's just difficult for them to explain it to an audience of people trying to get their bachelor's degree in engineering. Are you familiar with the Brachistochrone problem? I am. Good. And how it relates to the calculus of variations? It's an inverted cycloid. It, wonderful. Now, uh, what about Euler-Lagrange theorems? That's where I'm a little fuzzy. Ha! I knew it! All right. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot. The moment 
you graduate, this stuff completely just gone. I feel a little bad because this is the second time or third time I might have said I don't actually understand what they're talking about, but there was a point in time where Euler Lagrange theorem was actually very easy for me to understand and apply, but on my daily job as an engineer, I don't have to reference these principles or I've never even heard of the brachistochrome problem or how it's an inverted cycloid. I mean, these are all things that they might experience in academia doing research because like, when you're actually working as an engineer, you're not redefining anything. You're just using what has already been proven and applying that to real world problems so that you can save people more money and give them better products. Well, I dropped your class, so I hope you're happy. I told you you weren't smart enough to take it. I'm smart enough, Sheldon. Asking me a bunch of questions about a topic I'm not familiar with doesn't prove anything. I could do the same to you. you try me. Okay. You enjoy making fun of engineering so much. How do you quantify the strength of materials? Young's modulus. I'm not a material science engineer, so I don't need to know that information. And I don't even know why, as a physicist, he would need to know that either. Like, that doesn't apply to dark matter or a string theory, or at least I don't think it does. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, how do you prevent eddy currents in a transformer? When current goes through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around that wire. Now, in a transformer, the one wire is coiled multiple times, so when you put a current through that wire, the magnetic field that it creates is much more powerful. That really powerful magnetic field actually creates another current, and this new current is called an eddy current. And now that eddy current will actually create its own magnetic field. So now you have the original current that you sent through the wire, and then it has one magnetic field that's really powerful, and that magnetic field created the eddy current, and the eddy current created its own magnetic field. We'll call that the eddy magnetic field. And what's happening is the powerful magnetic field and the eddy current magnetic field are opposite is not the word I want to use, but they are, um, they are in conflict with each other. You do not want that within your transformer. So how you fix it is you myelinate the wires within it, or, or otherwise you would add insulation around them so that the eddy current that is actually, because you cannot stop the formation of eddy currents, but what you can do is you can greatly reduce their strength so they are negligible. Laminate the core material. Come on, give them a hard one. That was a hard one. <laughs> All right. How does the flow rate in a pipe depend on its diameter? You don't know, do you? <sighs> What's the matter, smart guy? Don't know Poiseuille's law? <laughs> why does Howard know that? I mean, he's a he's an aerospace engineer. Like, why does it matter to him? Like, for, for him, the material science aspect, I can see why that makes a difference, but why does he care about liquids flowing through a pipe? Anyways, Thank you guys so much for watching. I apologize that there weren't as many engineering topics for me to go over in this video as opposed to the previous videos that I have uploaded. But just throw in the comments if you want me to do any more of these. I had a lot of fun making this video. I really like this TV show. It's very fun to watch. So far, a lot of the science that I have seen of this is actually quite accurate. But the reason I wasn't able to explain more upon these topics is simply because I don't have to know them in order for me to do my job and apply myself as an electrical engineer. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had fun. Stay fresh, stay golden.